ourselves out of one city. So after the show, we're flying to Chicago and then we're, we're there for a few days. Mm -hmm. So we've been in New York for a few days, we've been in Austin for a few days, and we're kind of going around. So okay. we get to know a few cities very well. Do you have a favorite that you? New York's always fun. Yeah, obviously, absolutely. Yeah. So you go, you know, you guys go obviously to all the different countries. How do the crowds compare to country to country? I mean, um, I mean, we're lucky because we have great fans, obviously, and they're always keen to sing and, and have a good time. I think there's more, there's more kind of singing, more chanting and singing in Europe, perhaps. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more kind of general screaming and shouting and kind of fervor in, absolutely. in the U.S. Perhaps. Right. So, yeah, there's subtle differences. Okay. Um, how do you guys keep the songs fresh, particularly for yourselves, night to night? I mean. um, well, I think you have to think about the fact that there's a lot of people in the audience who never heard that song live before. Lots of people who, you know, every song that we play is probably going to be someone's favorite song. And so you have to kind of think about your audience more than anything. And sometimes we change the way we play it slightly and, you know, to try and keep it interesting, keep it fresh. We do different versions, you know, different, you know, shorter versions or edits or little, just little things that keep it, keep us on our toes. Okay. Um, and your show, your shows are obviously we've seen them a few times, and they're so electric. I mean, they just you can just feel them in the air. Have you seen what kind of live shows have you seen that inspire you? Um, well, obviously the kind of benchmark is is you two really. I suppose Absolutely. they're they're yes. a fantastic arena band and um, you know and stadiums as well. They, they're they're the master of all those kind of those buildings so but I think one of the bands that we felt that you know that really inspired us when we saw them live was the Flaming Lips because they, they do everything it's all about having fun you know sometimes bands like to kind of be very mysterious and to kind of make you feel like you're a bit of an outsider and you're looking in and other bands like the Flaming Lips just want to include you in everything it's Absolutely. like the whole thing is a big Lumping it over the crowds yeah. and, and it's stuff, just yeah. fun. Everyone's involved. Everyone's having a good time. And everyone's enjoying themselves. That's that's what we try and do. That's awesome. Um, so at every gig, you guys have um, volunteers representing Oxfam mm. um, out talking to fans, and sometimes you know people just in a hurry to get inside, or you know just kind of don't take notice. Why why should those people? Why should they t stop and, and listen, or at least check out the website when they get Sure. Home? Well, they don't have to. You know, obviously it's, a, it's totally about choice. But we ask people what. Well, we have, a, you know, we we work with Oxfam and we we take people along with us to, to you know to help them get their message out to more people. And I don't know, it's a choice you make. You can either choose choose to do something positive or not. You know, some people uh, sponsor children in in you know third world countries, and some people don't. And some people, so it's just a it's a choice. But it's something that we believe is is a good thing, and it's very straight. It's very simple for us to have someone. An Oxfam representative on the road with us, and they're always lovely people, and they always they do such a good job. And the people that you know, the the volunteers that come and help, are always so lovely. And so, it's a it's a it's an easy way of of spreading a good message. Okay, this is gonna be my last question, so sure. you can always leave no worries. Um, like, uh, let's see here. Uh, when people leave leave a show, what do you, what does Coldplay as a collective? What do they want people to take away with them? Um, Mostly that they've they've been they felt involved. I think um, I've been to a handful of shows where you end up feeling because either because of the size of the room or because of the whatever the production or the the fact the kind of mannerisms of a band where you just you end up feeling a little detached and it's not a nice feeling. You want to feel like you because now more than ever live music is so important and you know with the with everything else kind of dwindling and record sales and you know people actually don't really going on in terms of how to release records but live music is now more important than ever and I think um, people that invest in their in their production and, and invest in their in their fans having a great time are going to be the ones that, that that survive so we really feel like we want our people that have bought a ticket to our concert to come away feeling like they've had a great evening entertainment and they felt like that they, they saw a band that was trying hard to everyone, not just okay. the people in the expensive seats at the front. Absolutely. You know, just try and get yes. to everyone in the in the room. Yes. That's it. That's our that's what we try and do. Well thank you for sitting down with me. It's been well, more than awesome. welcome. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks for thanks for coming in. Yeah. Well done for winning the competition. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, thank you. Enjoy yeah. the show.